Last night, the eighth and final episode of Star Wars Ahsoka premiered, the episode being entitled The Lion, the Witch, and the Warlord. So to begin off, if you haven't seen the episode yet, this is going to be a spoiler review. If you would like to see my spoiler free review, it will be linked in the cards and in the description. So let's just, just jump right onto the episode and talk about the title, The Jedi, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Oh, uh, sorry, not Wardrobe, Warlord. But that is a nice transition into the fact that this title is clearly clearly a play on the line, the witch, in the wardrobe. I think it's just a perfect title and it really does address a lot of what's going on. Ahsoka, uh, Morgan Elspin, and so on. Though, the Jedi can also refer to Ahsoka. I already mentioned Ahsoka, but also Sabine and Ezra. And at different points, you could say it refers to all three of them, even though it is single. But then again, Jedi, well, Jedi is not grammatic. Yeah, Jedi is plural either way, so all three, but that's actually the one thing I want to address, the Jedi. Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra, the three Jedi of this series and of this episode in particular. All of them get their stories completed. Ezra gets to return home, though Ahsoka and Sabine do not. They have a thing, it's probably a good thing because wherever Balin is up to, they're going to need to be around to stop him. But going back to Ahsoka and Sabine, their story is complete. No, the individual character stories I think were largely completed already, especially for Ahsoka with um with a few parts back when she got her world between worlds of Force Vision and closure on what happened with Anakin. But this episode is really closing what's going on between them, um the kind of conflict they've been having, and you can tell at the end of the episode they firmly are proper master and apprentice. The friction between them probably. It's still there, but it's now a healthy friction, not going to negatively impact either of them. And I think what helped them a lot is actually a conversation that Ezra had with Hu Ying, that Ahsoka wasn't there, but Sabine was there for that. Basically, um, Ezra was building a new lightsaber and was looking for a part, frustrating Hu Ying, makes perfect sense, and um, when Hu Ying found, found out that Canon, so Caleb, as Hu Ying would have known him, was Ezra's master, he found one part that he gave to Ezra that was the one piece he was looking for. I don't know if Ezra was cognitively thinking that, but it was the same type of metal that Cannon had, which makes sense. And Hu Ying said he only had two of them, and he kept this, the second one in case Caleb ever needed a replacement. Well, now it's on Ezra's new lightsaber, so connecting that master and apprentice. And that's something a lot going on, the connection between the master and the apprentice. They address that a lot in this series, in the, and in this story in particular. And a big part of that is, is that is, I think, to help resolve that character conflict between Ahsoka and Sabine. And when uh, Sabine overhears Hu Yang basically tells as if there's nothing as strong as the bond between a master and apprentice besides the 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 friction and between them and the frustration. And I think that puts a lot of basically her um her and uh, Ahsoka's master and apprentice relationship in in place for her and able I think helps her to stop holding back. And because this is the episode where where Sabine finally connects to the force and uses the force. Before, yes, you could definitely tell there were moments when she was connecting with it, but it's more like in the Chirrut Emery sense, not at, you know, knowing the forces there and all that, but not really being able to use it like a Jedi typically does. And she does it in a moment of desperation, which kind of doesn't make sense, you know, feed over the fire in a sense, but she's able to put her lightsaber to her so she could defeat a, well, I guess a night death trooper, I guess? I'll talk about that in a moment. But yeah, and she's able to defeat them, and then that gives her an opening to help distract the other one, so Ezra could defeat the one he was fighting. But yeah, so their stories are nicely all wrapped up. But also Swan's story, and Morgan Elsman's story, so let's talk about the witch now from the title, and that being Morgan Elsman, and also probably the Great, the great Mothers as well for the Night Sisters, who basically can confer her a Night Sister soul, which was called the Blade of Talisman. Mother Talisman? From the Star Wars The Clone Wars, anyone? I'm pretty sure that's what I referenced to. Of course, um, her story does not end positively, because she, well, I guess it is positive if you, if you know from the perspective I hear it, because Ahsoka defeats her in a duel. So, Morgan Osborn is no more, to put it bluntly. And really, her story, I think, is, you know, 
She thought she was getting all she wanted, and all she got was to be sacrificed for the Great Mother's and Swan's own goals, whoever the, those end up being. And then Swan, well, he gets to return to the galaxy, and we gotta wait to see what happens next. But that cargo he's delivering for the Night Sisters, yeah, he's definitely delivering probably I think corpses of other Night Sisters to Decimil, and that could be quite a problem because he does arrive at Decimil. And I have a feeling those corpses will be reanimated and it's going to probably be problematic for everyone. So speaking of reanimated corpses, we finally get zombie stormtroopers or zombie night troopers. So about a few episodes back, kind of from that the night troopers weren't zombies. I just don't think they were zombies until this episode and only a select few of them are zombies. Namely those that got stayed behind basically as a sacrifice and... And basically when they're first defeated, they were basically turned into zombies so they continued to distract Ezra, Ahsoka, and Sabine from stopping Swan. And they do fail because those zombie de- night troopers successfully defeat them. And I include, I think, now those two death troopers, I don't know if they're zombie or not, but they're definitely fighting and looks like they may have some best gun plate in the armor be given they were able to defect, deflect some blaster bolts pretty effectively. But I gotta say, while I'm not the biggest fan of zombies as a genre, I gotta say, it was pretty interesting to see zombie stormtroopers, you know, just keep on fighting and really, um, being able to take a lot of damage. Where, like, the only thing that seems to actually stop them is some kind of attack towards the head or, or actually really kind of any kind of slicing attack, really. Blaster bolts don't defeat them, but anything that goes through a right organ seems to actually defeat them. It seems. But yeah, so that was a twist I wasn't expecting, but I really liked how they did it. Not only did they save for the last episode, probably setting up what's going to happen with those, what I'm suspecting on Night Sister Corpses, but it also keeps some of the craziness out there and kind of shows, you know, the, the tactics on Swan is choosing to implement to sew down Ahsoka, given what he knows of Anakin. And he knows a lot of Anakin, I think. He alludes to that when he sends one final transmission to Ahsoka. And actually, it's the only time he actually talks to Ahsoka this entire time. But basically, he basically laments that they did not get me face to face. And basically brags about being able to defeat her. But also, so that he did it because he knew who her master was. Again, connecting to that theme of master and apprentice relationships that's been popping up a lot in this in this series. We have Ahsoka and Anakin, Ahsoka and Sabine, Ezra and Kanan to a certain extent as well. So that theme is keep on popping up and how you can figure out certain things about certain Jedi based off of who their master was. Both the good and the bad. But... While Soka realizes in her journey that she's able to move beyond the bad that Anakin harbored, I think Swan thinks there's still a possibility that the bad, the darkness that Anakin had, because Swan knows Vader and Anakin are one and the same, because he calls Ahsoka a Ronin, not a Jedi, a Ronin. So I think he's thinking that there's a chance she may turn to the dark side because of what he thinks he knows about her master. But in fact, he doesn't know enough. If you will, he doesn't, he's misunderstanding, I think, that relationship. Well, he's going, he's overestimating his enemy once again. He admits that he overestimated and did not properly plan for, as he called it, Jedi tricks. He mentioned that many Imperial officers fell for it and even he did as well. He, so he did admit he did have a weakness. But now he's almost thinking he's overcome the weakness. Well, I suspect he has not fully overcome it yet. So yeah, we talked about all that stuff. Oh, should I mention as Ezra gets away by stealing some trooper armor, so he has a new bucket to add to his collection. <laughs> I had to mention that. Up. And the first one to approach him when he lands on the New Republic ship. Which, by the way, is nicely mirroring the opening. Same shuttle, different New Republic ship. But still, I like that mirroring there. Chopper. Chopper's the one who shows up first. Which is like, of course, the... Because Chopper was often portrayed very much... Like a pet, droids often are in Star Wars, especially astromechs, since they don't communicate with the, with, they communicate in binary rather than in, well, what's in universe called basic, what we call language English, or whatever language you happen to be watching the show in. Makes sense, because, you know, as a quote unquote, a surrogate for a cat, yeah, sure, he'll be a bit grumpy, but he also, like, when the cat trusts you, you know you, that you're good. Um, but yeah, so that's just another thing I just wanted to throw out there. So that does make me wonder, could, could, um, Jason be trained by 
Ezra next. I mean, continue, you know, continuing a new master and apprentice relationship. It's just a solid um, speculation. It's just something I had in the back of my head for quite some time, actually. But going back to the everything going on Parida, the last stuff I really want to talk about are the final scenes. I already mentioned the final scene with Ezra, but Ahsoka and Sabine, after they successfully escape and all that, them and Hu Yang, they're, go- they're living with the local inhabitants. Uh, Nati, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so they're going there. Then we, you know, they're settling in pretty nicely. And this, I'm going to jump a little bit to the end before I talk about Balin and Shin. But um, while they're, they're kind of talking about all that, that what has happened, you know, Ezra finally made a home, all that. Which Ahsoka is much more confident of, probably because she has a stronger connection to the Force, so, he, so she probably can feel through the Force that Ezra made the home. Well, Sabine still needs to nurture her connection with the Force. She's finally unlocked her connection with the Force, which I have a feeling the destruction of Mando did not help her connection to the Force. I'm just saying, but she's finally unlocked it, and it's probably only going to grow from here. Oh, by the way, it's confirmed that Ahsoka's. I'm uh, sorry, that Sabine's family was killed in the purge. That's tragic. I mean, it, it is really tragic, really sad. Her father was an artist from calling out loud, not a warrior. Okay, the, the destruction there over, because there's a lot more to talk about the scene, and Sabine thinks she saw something in the in the light, in the trick of the light or something in the clouds or whatever. She thought she saw something, but she dismisses it as not. Ahsoka goes to take a second look, and, well, we don't see what she saw, because it's, and in fact, we'll, I think we even get it over the shoulder shot, and we still don't see anything. But then Ahsoka walks away, the camera changes angle once again, and it's Anakin's fourth ghost. So, that's telling us two things. One, Anakin may appear to Ahsoka again in the future, and two, Sabine's connection to the fourth is growing the fact that she sought that she did see, I think, a little bit of the shimmer of the Force Ghost, but couldn't be because either her connection with Anakin wasn't really there, or just her simple connection with the Force wasn't still. She really did not process what she was seeing with her eyes. The eyes, and I have a feeling maybe someday in the future it might become a little stronger. But yeah, I really did like that scene though, because it really puts a good close on Ahsoka's story. Sabine's story as well, she's unlocked her connection with the Force, which I think we'll see her grow in the next season and in other stories as well. But the story with Ahsoka and her journey dealing with basically what happened with her master, it's pretty much unspoken, but all totally so excellent to the storyline overall, that seeing Anakin's Force goes, I think is cementing the end of that story for her. She still has the story she needs that's being told with Sabine and all that that we were, that's been set up in this episode, but that part of her story is complete. It, there's no more loose f- threads there. It's now what's going to happen in the future. The past is not holding a circle back anymore. So now let's talk about Shin and Balin. So Shin, she settles in with, she basically raises her lightsaber above her head and ignites it. And when she's approaching the raiders camp, so probably she's going to settle in there and become like, I guess, a warlord or something. I was kind of hoping for redemption for her, but you know what, it's still possible. Um, you know, she probably felt like she got more kinship with them than she did with Imperial, so maybe that's why she went to them. We still gotta wait to see where her story goes. Um, and I have a feeling it's going to connect up with Baden's story again as well. But Baden's story, and well, we still don't know what he's after, but we get a little more hint as his last scene. He's standing on top of a cliff, and it looks like it's pointing, and it's a mountain. The camera changes angle, and we get to see what he's standing on top on. It's a statue of the Mortis Gods. Though, something should be interesting. He's standing on, it's st- 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 like carved into the rock. Kind of like Mount Rushmore, crazy horse when you think about it. But he stands, he's standing on basically the arm of the father pointing. And next, and so on the father's left, that would be the viewer's right. And um, when we actually get to see the statues, is the son from the Mortis Ark and the Mortis Gods. And on the left, from our perspective, well, there's no face. But it has to be the daughter because we also get a scene where we do finally see Morai in live action. Or Morai in, in the owl form, the convo form or whatever. I forget the exact term. Which also cements Ahsoka's story a- a- ending and completion. But it does make... Because some people I know speculate that Anakin's the new 
new father in terms of most gods, but I kind of don't think that's really what's going on there. There's a lot more going on there. But I did find it interesting that on this planet, the father remained, the son remained, but the daughter's statue was destroyed. Everything that's going to be indicative of what's going to happen. How? I don't know, but it's something important, I think. It's important that that's the only one that was destroyed, the only statue that was destroyed. Still, what is Balin after? We don't know. But whatever it is, Ahsoka and Sabine are there to stop him. And maybe, who knows how Shin's story will go as well. But that is all I have for you today. There is so much more I can discuss about this episode and the series as a whole. But you know what? For the series as a whole, I'll hold off a little bit. I know I discussed a little bit in this review because it's been the conclusion of the series. But next week, I'm going to be doing my full-on review for every episode the entire season. So stay tuned for that. But if you want to talk more about this episode, and you know what? The season as a whole, the comment section is down below. I would love to hear from you and get that discussion going. And of course, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good day. Ignite wherever you are. May the force be with you. Always. Thank you for watching this video, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give this video a like as well as subscribe to my channel and ring that bell to stay up to date on my latest content. Also, be sure to check out the link tree in the description as well as any other links I have down there. <laughs>